Welcome to 6.5 Media. We're on the road here at RFC Conference 2024. I'm Krista Maycomber, and I'm joined here today with Mike Nichols, who's a VP of Product for Security with Elastic. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. How's the conference going? Well, it's been great. It's uh, for the past couple of years, we've seen the you know, conference kind of decline a bit with the yeah. pandemic, and it's it really feels like it's back in full swing again. It's busy, it's active, there's a lot of people around. So. It's, I'm <laughs> sure, and I know, you know, we'll certainly get into it. You guys, you know, Elastic has a great announcement um, yeah. this week, so I'm sure there's been a lot of traction on that. Um, but Mike, before we kind of dig into some of those details, I wanted to maybe take a step back and talk about, you know, kind of a, a challenge that we're hearing within the Security Operations Center. And that's really around kind of the alert fatigue that we're seeing um, become created by some of the traditional SIM tools that um, your security analysts and your SOC teams are, are utilizing. Um, and so I know that that's kind of really central to your announcement is kind of using artificial intelligence to, um, again, kind of maybe streamline and address some of those challenges. So can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the you know, the, the job of the analysis is hard. You know, I, I was a defender in a previous life before I became a product manager. And, uh, you know, we, we spend a little bit of our time doing the really important stuff, finding threats, remediating, but mm -hmm. a lot of our job is mm -hmm. doing things that are frankly not that great. And it, it leads to analyst burnout. It leads to retention challenges. And alert fatigue is one of those problems, right? Yeah. The, you know, there are so many threats emerging and new products emerging, look at RSA, mm -hmm. but each creates a new set of alerts and then you combine them into a SIM, which has its own alerts. And all of a sudden you're sort of overwhelmed. Right. And the challenge is we at Elastic really believe in democratizing security. We're trying to provide the access to enterprise security to everybody because mm -hmm. the threats don't discriminate, right? The threats are, are hitting every kind of company, even ones that don't have security teams. And SIMs need to be everywhere. They need to be for everyone. But the problem is they're not accessible for one. And we've, we solved that problem in Elastic. We have a completely free and open solution. You can get us on the cloud. But usability is the second part of that problem, yes. right? How can you use a product? And SIMs have been, you know, kind of the, the some people have a little bit of a, a frustration with the term because it comes with it a weight of challenges and, and hard to use. Mm -hmm. and so. Exactly, exactly. So, um, and especially if you think about maybe kind of some more junior level analysts that are looking to kind of, you know, really hit the ground running and um, become impactful to their team, especially as the threat landscape just continues to advance. We see attackers now have generative AI. So, you know, I would say what we're seeing is in addition to kind of streamlining some of these day-to-day -day operations, it's also about kind of upskilling as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah elevating the analysts. And, and you know, I think uh, cybersecurity got relegated to the world of IT security, but really uh, the best analysts just have analytic skills, analytic thought process. Mm -hmm. And when they get into a SOC and they're unfortunately sat down typically in front of this deluge of alerts, it can be overwhelming and yeah. people, you know, we might scare away fantastic talent that is ready to take the job on. And so how can we summarize, simplify, you know, the information for them and, and let them do what they do best, analyze and almost detective work through the problem and not do all the, you know, like we like to call it eliminating the suck, all the, all the, the stuff that isn't fun to do, get rid of that and let them focus on the thing that really matters. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, so Mike, I wanted to kind of talk about the other, one of the other things that we're hearing so much about the show, which is, um, generative AI. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my understanding looking at the announcement from Elastic is that, um, you guys are using generative AI to um, support threat detection. Um, you know, is that right? So, you know, kind of going back to um, these security teams, these SOC teams are inundated with these alerts. It's really difficult to kind of, you know, identify threats as they're happening and, you know, kind of what they really need to be paying attention to. Yeah, we found that, you know, I mean, last year, obviously, we got hit with this phenomenal, you know, model uh, elevation. All of a sudden, everyone was trying to apply generative AI to many different use cases. And so we looked at the typical SOC and sort of the core things that SOC needs to accomplish, the core workflows that they're working on, and try to focus on what are the big pain points and where can we see if there's a way to leverage generative AI to help solve that. And a key part of our focus was not creating a new process because you know people are already overwhelmed how can we take the existing process and improve it so we focus on alert triage mm -hmm. which is like we're saying that that first step of i log into the morning and it's like overwhelming yeah and what we found is that you know elastic itself is our, our security product is built on the elastic search ai platform mm -hmm. and you know elastic as a core company you know we power things like walmart.com and uber and netflix we are a data company we can find insights and data super fast and we also have a built-in vector database. We use what's called retrieval augmented generation, which mm -hmm. provides sort of private context to those models. So we're able to take all that amazing differentiation and power and pull it into security pretty quickly. So now what we're doing with this new announcement, what we call attack discovery, 
is we can take that massive list of alerts that you just, you know, somewhere in there is probably a problem. Now, this false negative challenge where I'm get, there's a problem in there somewhere, I'm not going to get to it, there's an infection that happened, mm -hmm. and you know, how, do I, how do I fix that? How do I bring the biggest problem up to the top? We take all that information, we then you know, sort of vectorize the content, bring that context to a model of your choice, uh, and then come back. What's amazing, it comes back and says, hey, here's the thing that matters most. We actually leverage the MITRE ATT&CK framework, okay. and we look for, you know, people have been doing grouping of alerts and things for a long time, but they typically use atomic indicators. You know, here's the same username, here's the same hash, and those are useful, but really attacks spread. They start somewhere, uh, they you know, get credentials, they laterally move to a different system, they then, you know, they, there's reconnaissance, there's, there's port scannings. Those are hard to find because they don't have the same indicator tying them together. Mm -hmm. But these models are phenomenal at what I like to call the serendipity moment, right? Being able to discover that these things are uniquely tied because this is a typical exfil problem that we see tied to this recon problem, so then these things must be related. So what comes back from this big massive list is just here's one attack and it maps it across MITRE's attack uh, framework. And, and our goal is that, you know, analysts, when they come in in the morning, the first thing they look at is that page. Okay. Take those, take those really important problems, the top of the, the, you know, the, top of the list, out of, the, prob out of the, the big list they have. And then you can go back to the alert list and triage through, and those are probably false positives, you had a tune and, and things, but you don't miss the most important thing because we found the problem and brought it up to the top. And that's, that's so critical because, um, like we were kind of referencing, you know, attacks are, are just continuously evolving yeah. over time. I know you referenced kind of the lateral movement, especially mm -hmm. as attackers are focusing on the identity um, instead of kind of even just brute force hacking. Yeah. It. So, um, you know, the ability for these analysts to kind of log in and just, you know, what are the critical, um, you know, potential vulnerabilities, um, things of that nature that they need to address. Um, I'm sure you've been getting some really fantastic feedback, you know, yeah. so far as you've been having conversations at the booth this week. Yeah, we've been great feedback from the booth. And also we have some phenomenal design partners and others have been using this in the field. And we had our assistant, which is sort of that buddy in the box, that's mm -hmm. been generally available since July of last year. Mm -hmm. So we've had people, a lot of our customers been using that uh, already to get that sort of, uh, you know, phone a friend help. And now this new embedding of that workflow, this new attack view, attack discovery view, uh, is something we just came out with. But we've had design partners using it. and. You know, in Elastic, our customers range from, of course, we're, we're over 50% of the Fortune 500, but we also have a huge amount of commercial customers and even, you know, cu customers just using it at their house from the way that it is so accessible. And so this idea of making SIMs for everyone, bringing this technology, these detection capabilities down, uh, we found companies that typically don't have traditional socks. They're the IT manager who takes one hat off and puts the security hat on. They've been really impressed by this because it allows them to not miss a core problem, but also not feel overwhelmed that their whole day has to be alert triage when they also have to help their executives log into their systems. You know, there's all the things they have to do every day, right? Absolutely. Uh, so it's been really a boon to the non-traditional security operation centers, as well as, of course, to SOCs to help them, you know, elevate their tier one, tier two analysts. Absolutely. I mean, just you paint this great picture of, you know, logging in at home even, yeah. right? It's kind yeah. of that, you know, that easy to use. And you certainly make a great point about kind of needing to wear multiple hats across, you know, security and, and other areas of the business. Yeah. Um, certainly can see how that's impactful. It is. So, Mike, the other area, right, where we're seeing kind of artificial intelligence um, become, you know, become useful in the security space is sort of as a, not quite a chatbot, but more of kind of as an assistant. Right. Um, and I understand that that is also part of the announcement to kind of further support that productivity that we've been talking about. So can you walk us through a little bit of that announcement? That yeah, kind of announcement? exactly. Yeah. Like I said earlier, the, the point for we're try everything we try to do is is trying to stay within your existing workflow. So, you know, the assistant, which was out last year, uh, was in that alert triage workflow, mm -hmm. and it did pull that context using that RAG capability okay. uh, based on what you were looking at. So, hey, I'm looking at this thing, and you would ask a question, it would then contextualize that, add it to the model, uh, and really provide some great feedback. But now that we have attack view, what, what's really powerful about the assistant is now if you ask a question, depending on where you are, it can contextualize with that attack you're in or maybe numerous attacks. You can say, hey, here's the two or three that matter. And that allows it to take that additional context into remediation steps. Mm -hmm. uh, it can do things like, you know, help you map a, a visualization of the attack because a lot of times people might be visual learners, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you reading it is great, but seeing it, it might be more powerful. So you can create visualizations. You can have human readable, digestible information. Mm -hmm. It's really there to just say, hey, I, I need help. What's next, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we found it's a fantastic addition to the workflow of log in, find the attack, and then ask for help. Mm -hmm. right. So can you elaborate a little bit more on sort of, you know, that help? I know, imagine it's sort of, you know, guidance on how to remediate. Um, can you walk us through that a little bit more as well? Yeah, yeah. you know, the, this is a place where we're so excited by the rapid, you know, development within large language models. Okay. One thing we chose to do very early on was 
have an agnostic approach, right? Mm -hmm. Allow uh, our customers to utilize whatever model they want to, uh, whether that's large language models from hyperscalers, uh, you know, Google, Amazon, Microsoft models, or even uh, local models, because we have many, you know, government customers that want to be fully disconnected. So being able to leverage a, a fully localized model on their own hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seemed to really pay off now because we're getting more and more, you know, domain specific and focused models that are coming out that provide you know, great guidance for different types of verticals, different types of customers, and allows them to really kind of specify for their environment a, a unique way to remediate. So it isn't just a generalized, maybe do these few things, but, you know, if you're in a critical infrastructure vertical, you might get specific remediations about, you know, how to remediate the SCADA systems that you're on. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's a great point, the remediation steps. Uh, we also found it's really useful for migrations. Uh, okay. One of the hard problems about moving into a SIM is that you, no one's moving into a SIM for the first time, for the most part, you're coming off of something, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of prior knowledge built out in detection rules and searches mm -hmm. and dashboards. And the Elastic, everything in the Elastic does is in the open. Our code, our models, our rules, it's just it's the ethos of our business. So these models know everything about us. So when you bring in somebody else's you know, rule that you built and say, hey, I made this in this product, can you help me do it in Elastic? It can give you the Elastic rule instantly. So that that barrier of entry is much lower. You know, Either it's your own stuff you developed or even community information. Hey, the, you know, I need some help. And someone says, hey, I tried this over here. Mm -hmm. Pull that in and you can bring that in the system. So migrations have been really powerful. Mm -hmm. Remediation has been really powerful. Uh, and then we're discovering fun stuff every day. Just on the show floor today, I, yesterday, uh, we had uh, a woman the, from South Korea uh, who was there. And we were like, oh, well, let's let's try this. And we, we said, hey, can you translate this whole attack into Korean? And it did. In, on the fly, it's like, here you go. Here's, here's, <laughs> and and so the, there's just, we're just having all these uh, fun discoveries of what these models are doing because they're just innovating so quickly. So. That's that's wild. And things you wouldn't even think about, right? Yeah, they, and honestly, it's just things that we just we just try it out. And it, one of yeah. the things we keep saying is, well, I don't know, let's let's ask the assistant and see. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that's how we start to see where it can really be useful and yeah. impactful. And, you know, we're seeing it's a little bit of sort of crawl rock one when we yes. come to, you yes. know, adopting artificial intelligence. It's you know, you start to kind of trust it in certain areas and really see the impact and then kind of grow your use from there. Oh, trust yeah. is huge. Yeah, yeah, we we fully believe in both, you know, being very open about both security and privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, we created an entire framework for anonymization and redaction of data. So mm -hmm. we, we built an open schema. It's one that we donated out to Otel last year. It's called the Otel Semantic Convention. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, that that schema allows an administrator to say, you know, never send these types of fields, you know, anonymize these ones so you can still correlate, but they don't know the details. They just have a hash, for example. And that was really impactful. And then what we also just did at the, at the uh, show here today or, or yesterday was we also focused on the security side. We built some integrations to get the, the invocation data from these models. We're running detection logic around potential abuse of these models. Mm -hmm. We're trying to really help ease the barrier, which is typically both privacy and security. Yes. Because... AI is an inevitability. M much like crowd transformation, you, you can't say, no, I'm not going to go to the cloud, right? Uh, AI is going to start getting embedded in everything we do. And I think it's a, a massive net positive. And so if we can remove those barriers and help executives like CISOs understand you know, how they can benefit but not take the risk, yes. it's amazing. Yeah, that's a big thing that I'm hearing at the show as well, is how do we harness artificial intelligence in kind of a secure, right, exactly. in a secure manner. Exactly. And I think this is a great example of we're getting down to really some of the meat of how we do that is kind of really starting to go beyond that buzzword for sure. Yeah. So, Mike, I'm really glad that you're mentioning um, the large language models in particular mm -hmm. um, and the flexibility that Elastic offers. Um, you kind of referenced RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, mm -hmm. Um, and sort of, you know, the ability for customers as they want to, to either have a private model or to start to integrate some more specific and contextualized data into the large language model itself to then feed the right. artificial intelligence. Right. Um, that was a part of this announcement for Elastic as well, correct? Yeah, the, the, the bring your own model idea is just really powerful. It, you know, people can take their own uh, cost benefit analysis and, and also their own like domain information into, into account. A great example is, you know, when Google acquired Mandiant, they're developing a, a phenomenal model. I think they're now, they, they changed the name. I think they now call it um, Gemini for Security. Mm -hmm. But it has all of Mandiant's knowledge in it. And so, it, you know, we found when using that, it even can do things like attribution if that matters for your organization. Mm -hmm. So if that matters to you and, and that cost benefits there, then you can choose that model. Mm -hmm. We also have been using the new Claude models from Anthropic that are mm -hmm. phenomenal, like really fast and, and inexpensive. And so maybe if attribution isn't important, but those things are, you can then choose that model. So mm -hmm. the flexibility for our customers to be able to 
they not just pick one, but then tomorrow pick another, right? You're not locked in. It's very easy to say, well, let me try this one out. And yeah. even in the product, you can do one for discovery, one for a question, one for a different question, right? <laughs> I that's that's fantastic, and it's such a great um, it's such a great point, right? So not only are we going to have different use cases, so we might want different large language models for each use case, but also as our as we use artificial intelligence over time the large language models that we're going to want to use are also going to want to evolve. So to exactly. have that flexibility and to not have to lock in right up front as well, in addition to being more contextualized. Yeah, it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. It, you know, being able to discern what's in an attack and then also being able to give sort of response and remediation and attribution are could be different things. And you might use different models for either. And so what what the flexibility allows is that customers have that ability to, to experiment change. And as you mentioned, mm -hmm. You know, a big one is just using their own on-premise. So we, mm -hmm. we found some great local models. And of course, customers are experimenting on modifying and building their own. Mm -hmm. Why not leverage those? Like they've been leveraging machine learning models for years within Elastic, leverage these generative AI models within mm -hmm. within their systems without having to be sort of locked into what we think is best. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and that's a great point, too, that you mentioned. You know, your customers have already been working with you in this fashion for a long time. For a long time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So. We, we've been leading this uh, machine learning side for, for mm -hmm. many, many years. Yep both in creation of supervised and unsupervised models, but also in the importing and usage of those, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's pulling them in from hugging face or if you built your own, right? The, the ability, you know, it, our, our whole ethos in Elastic is that we want to make you more successful. Mm -hmm. And we do that by allowing you uh, to leverage what you've already done in hopefully a more scalable, efficient, faster way. Absolutely. Well, Mike, I think that's a great point to kind of conclude on today. Um, this has been a fantastic conversation and certainly a lot of exciting developments coming out of Elastic. Um, really appreciate you sitting down with us today. It's thank been a lot so of fun. Much. Yeah, thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Appreciate it. And to our audience, thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, this has been 6.5 Media um, on the road here at our state conference 2024. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe and please make sure not to miss our, um, our other content coming out of the show here. Wow.